cryptocurrency grows in popularity, there are more questions coming up around cryptos and tax and whether companies should be accepting crypto as currency. So today we'll be discussing some of these points and a lot more. Hello, welcome back to our channel and podcast. My name's Gemma and here at WS we talk about all things relating to money, mortgages and positive money mindset. So if that interests you, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps with our YouTube algorithm and means that you won't miss out on any of our videos. On today's episode of Let's Talk Money and Mortgages, we have Weejay here with us. Weejay is a founder and co-director of WS Accountancy. He has worked in the industry for over 20 years and it's an absolute pleasure to have him back on the show. Hi Weejay, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you Gemma. Thanks for having me on the show again, really appreciate it. Welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about cryptocurrency. The first question I wanted to talk about was what do you need to bear in mind when investing in cryptocurrency? Because it is a very new thing, isn't it? It is a quite new thing and a lot of hype about uh, cryptocurrencies these days. I'm sure you saw the news a couple of days ago about the cryptocurrency coming in down because somebody tweeted saying they're not going to they're <laughs> not going to take on crypto. So it's a lot of hype, a lot of celebrities tweeting about these things. So, you know, there's a bit of hype on cryptocurrencies. Mm-hmm. But the fundamental cryptocurrency is technically even though it's called as a currency, it's, it's not a currency per se, it's an asset which you get through, uh, you know, mining using a platform called the blockchain. Uh, there's different kind of uh, cryptocurrencies out there, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, things like that, you know, quite popular ones. There's quite mm-hmm. a lot out there. And one of the main reasons people are getting into this is because it's a lot of hype, a lot of news. You yeah. know, that's, that's the main reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what is then the kind of differences between investing with like cryptocurrency and then regular investments? Contrary to what the name suggests, it's not a currency per se. It's, it's it's called cryptocurrency, but it's not like a dollar or a pound or a euro. It's an asset. If you ask me, it's an easier way to example a cryptocurrency is assume it's a gold, right? So gold is mm-hmm. a commodity, it's an asset, which has a value on it. And, you know, the exchange determines the value of a gold. But with crypto, it is quite hard to determine that. It's quite unregulated at the moment. It's pretty much driven by the demand and supply and on the mining activities. So it's quite different. But mm-hmm. as far as the taxes are concerned or the HMRC is concerned, it's, it's asset class. That's a simple explanation. Right. And I suppose because it's kind of based on a demand, that's why the price can fluctuate, kind of like what we're seeing at the moment, right? Yes. It's like any other product out there, right? any other shares or any other commodities out there. Mm-hmm. The supply and demand and the market activity kind of drives the price, right? You know, if one person starts selling, everybody starts selling. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so if one person starts buying, everybody starts buying. So yeah, it's, it's pretty much market driven. Mm-hmm. The one fundamental difference is there's not a set exchange that regulates cryptos, right? You have different exchanges, private exchanges where the cryptocurrencies are traded, but they're, they're not regulated exchanges, whereas a lot of the other commodities, so, you know, shares pretty much, you know, on a regulated exchange, whereas crypto is on an unregulated exchange. Okay, so then what's like the legal stance on making money with crypto then? Yes, people assume it's like gambling. It's not like gambling, for example. Gambling does not have any uh, tax consequences. For example, if you go and, you know, put some money on Grand National and if you win a million pound out of it, you know, you don't pay any tax on it. Whereas mining or buying, selling crypto, there are tax consequences. It's very important to understand that there's a difference between gambling and there's a difference between investing or trading mm. crypto assets, right? Right. In terms of declaring your earnings, like what do you have to do then with crypto? It's very important to keep track record of what you've done. So I would say there are three kind of people who are into crypto, right? To assume this discussion is about just the individuals, not about the companies. There are three kinds of individuals who would deal with crypto. One, there might be individuals who might be mining crypto assets. There might be individual, well, you know, day trading cryptocurrencies, buying, selling, doing it on a day-to-day basis. And there might be people who are purely investing on cryptos, right? You know, I've got a lot of friends who bought cryptos, you know, waiting to see what's going to happen in a few years or a few months. And then, you know, sell, buy based on the, the price differences. The people who mine, what you need to understand is they will caught under something called an income tax. So, you know, what we pay when we take a salary, you pay the income tax on it, you pay national insurance on it. Same when you do mining. So if you do cryptocurrency mining, that will come under income tax. So you will pay national insurance, you will pay income tax. For example, if somebody is mined, if they got a you know value of a couple of bitcoins for that work, they'll pay the income tax on the value of the bitcoin they got. Mm-hmm. Assume the same person thought, okay, I mined, I got a couple of bitcoins for say 30,000 pounds today. And after six months, bitcoins is 60,000 pounds and they decided to sell that 
Bitcoin at that point, and they pay something called a capital gains tax, which is taxed quite differently. In UK, for example, first 12,300 is tax free, and the rest of it you know, depends on which rate taxpayer you are. For example, if you're a basic rate taxpayer, you pay 10% tax. If you're a higher taxpayer, you pay 20% tax. So those are two main things, right? The income tax or the capital gains. And one other point I forgot to touch was the people who actively trade, right? What's the definition yeah. of trade? Again, it's a, <laughs> a big subject. There's something called a badges of trade. If somebody want to look up it on HMRC, where HMRC defines whether something is a trading activity or something is an investing activity, right? So if you're a trader who buys cryptocurrency today, you know, shift it tomorrow, you buy something else day after, then they don't get the capital gains allowance. They get something called an income tax allowance, so then they pay normal income tax. So uh-huh. that's a fundamental of how we get taxed. So it's more to do with the frequency of how often you trade it? Technically, not even the frequencies. As I said, it's a badges of trade, but frequency is one of the key identifiers uh-huh. of whether it's something is a trading activity or something thing is an investment activity. Okay, so in terms of tax, is crypto different to other investments? How is it looked at? Yes, so the easy way to understand is, for example, if you buy shares on one of the FTSE 100 companies, right? You buy for a certain price when you sell after a year or two, you know, a couple of years time, if the value has gone up on the difference, you pay capital gains tax. Same for the crypto assets. But the main difference is on the shares, you can have something called a ISA share account. And if you do that trading through your ISA accounts, you don't pay any tax. But mm-hmm. currently, you know, you can't put the crypto into ISAs because, you know, the regulation does not allow you. So, you know, you will get caught normal taxes, whereas shares, there's an opportunity to trade through uh, ISA accounts, whereas cryptos, you cannot do at the moment. Okay. I feel like this question is kind of like a no-brainer, but I'm going to ask it anyway, just in case. Do you get tax rebates for investing in cryptocurrency? <laughs> good, good, good try there. I would say you would get a take tax rebate, but put it this way, right? Assume you're an investor, right? You have a certain investment in Bitcoin and, you know, one in Bitcoin and some in another crypto asset, cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. And you're selling both cryptocurrency at the same time. Assume one makes a loss other one makes a gain, you can set off each other, right? It's not a technical rebate, you know, government does not encourage you to invest on cryptos because one, it's unregulated, it's a quite boring in future, what will happen? The second thing is the, the amount of energy that gets into mining bitcoins, right? So the, those two things, you know, everybody talks about energy and the pollution, etc. So those are the two main things that, uh, you know, governments are not actively kind of uh, promoting uh, cryptocurrencies at the moment. But uh, HMRC started a consultation last year, uh, July, I believe, to, you know, come up with a more current tax treatment for these assets because a lot of the traditional historical tax regulations around capital gains and income tax does not fit into this new thing, right? So that's a bit of a challenge for the government. So, you know, if you were going to invest in crypto, what would be the best way to do so to kind of be tax efficient? As I said, ideal way to invest on a share would be through ISA because on the gains or in dividend income that you earn from those shares is, is not taxable. For crypto assets, you know, it is taxable. But if you don't know about mining, if you don't know about... <laughs> day trading, etc. And if you want to just see how it goes, you know, invest in, in a certain amount because, you know, as you know, first 12,300 is tax free. If your gain is up to 12,000, you can sell it and, you know, you don't pay any tax on it, assuming you don't have any other disposables. One point I forgot to touch was about the disposables. When I say disposables, it's not only selling your crypto assets. You might use cryptocurrency to pay for some of the services. For example, you no know, Apple Pay accept crypto assets, right? And, you know, Tesla said that they're going to accept cryptocurrencies. Yeah. So even if you buy something, again, it, you have to assume it's as a disposal, right? Because you had cryptocurrency today and tomorrow mm-hmm. you don't have it because you paid for the goods or, you know, you sold it. All that are triggering events. So either you sold it or used the crypto assets to pay for it. Again, the tax has to be paid on that. So it's very important you keep all the <laughs> activities quite clear because when it comes to filing your taxes, your accountant will ask for all this information. Okay. So any tips in general for investing? I think you've mentioned the ISA, but I didn't know if there was anything else that you'd recommend. I'm not a financial advisor. I, I shouldn't be giving any financial advice. Individuals need to go and speak to their individual IFAs to understand better about their investments and the risk appetite they have. But if you are like me, quite amateur on the game and do not know much about cryptos, you just want to still want to be part of it, 
my advice is do something small and then see how it goes the good thing about the crypto exchanges some of the exchanges are quite cheap some of them are quite expensive but if you move cryptocurrency from one exchange to another exchange you don't pay any tax because you're moving you know from one safe to another safe right some people also kind of exchange a bitcoin to ethereum or you know dog coin or whatever again that's a triggering event so remember that you will have to pay tax people assume okay i sold bitcoin i bought something else there's no tax and that's not entirely true my advice for anyone who amateur like me <laughs> do not go and sell your house and invest on cryptos <laughs> bit of hype on today but anything can happen tomorrow so if you still want to be part of it just start small and also speak to your ifa to run past your risk <laughs> appetites yeah okay if you are a company investing in crypto how does it affect you as a company would you say the key difference is companies do not have something called a capital gains tax right so it's only the individuals who have income tax and no capital gains tax for the companies they have a flat corporation tax so again is that company doing this as a trade activity on a day to day mm-hmm. basis buying selling then it's taxed differently or it's buying it in keeping in as an investment and selling it so it is taxed differently this lot more gets into the company tax affairs because you know carry forward losses trading losses trading profits mm-hmm. so that's a much more deeper topic probably we have another separate webinar on it but the fundamental is you know companies don't have this 12300 allowance they just have one flat corporation tax return on any gains they make whereas individuals have a separate for income tax and separate thing for the capital gains tax. Okay. If you're a company and you're, you know, you're looking at Apple and you're looking at perhaps Tesla thinking, oh, they're, you know, accepting Bitcoin as a payment. Can we, like, should we start accepting crypto as a means of currency? What would your advice be to those people? It's possible to accept crypto as a payment method. For example, some accountants are taking crypto as a payment method. That's entirely up to who's the merchant, who's uh, taking the responsibility, right? So, for example, if I'm an accountant, say I've charged someone for £100, they can decide to pay me £100 through a bank transfer, so they can decide to pay us through £100 on a crypto asset provided we take that as a payment method. Unfortunately, we do not do at the moment. But if you are someone who's paying for that, as I said earlier, you'll have to treat that event as a triggering event for a disposal. So if you bought a Bitcoin for a small amount, if you sold part of Bitcoin to pay for a service, you will pay tax on that triggering event. As a merchant who's receiving that, they'll have to treat that as a you know revenue for tax purposes. And the fluctuation on that currency, you know, going up and down, it, it's the risk that they have to take because what matters is what value of that particular currency on the day that they got the payment. So that's the revenue recognition and what happens with it after that is separate kind of tax treatment for that. Okay. The last thing that I was going to discuss is cryptocurrency and money laundering, because I, I think that there's some questions about that going around and just wondered what the signs would be for the money laundering and how to kind of avoid that if you are accepting crypto as a currency for your company. That's a really good question, Gemma. To understand money laundering in a simple term, making a black money into a white money or, you know, laundering the illegal proceeds into a more genuine proceeds right mm-hmm. so because crypto is on unregulated exchanges unregulated market a lot of potential for criminals to use these funds to launder money right so it's very important if you are a merchant and taking those funds to make sure the origination of where these funds are originated from put it this way say you want to buy a tesla using your crypto currencies what tesla would do to buy by all the money laundering regulation because that's a separate regulation altogether they would have to see who's buying the car what are the id where do they live what are their tax affairs how did they source these uh, Bitcoin funds, etc. So they have to do much more detailed KYC or know your customer mm-hmm. on yourself when you pay for these things using crypto. So that's the only way to avoid it. If you read the rules and, you know, Apple Pay or through any of these merchants, they will say, you know, if you want to pay through crypto, we will have to do all this to make sure it's not a laundered fund. So it's not the funds that you obtain from criminal sources. It's very important as a merchant to do all that before taking the funds, which is why a lot of merchants are kind of against taking these funds because it's not like paying from credit card or a debit card or bank transfer. But it again, the amount of money, right? For example, when you buy a house, even though you transfer the funds from your current account to the solicitor's account, I'm sure solicitor will go through and ask you, okay, send me how you got these funds, you know, send me the savings mm-hmm. account last six years or five years because they want to do much more analysis to see these funds are genuinely created and yeah. not by you know criminal sources so it's, it's the same case for cryptos all right well thank you vj for that great advice obviously i just want to put a reminder out there that this advice may or may not be applicable to everybody so please do check with your accountant or ifa if you do have any questions if you don't have an accountant and you don't have an ifa i will leave our ws contact details below 
as we're always happy to help. Thank you again for joining us today. Some really great tips. So thank you for that, VJ. Um, we'll be back next week with another episode of Let's Talk Money and Mortgages. Have a great day. Stay safe and we'll see you again soon.